living a spirit-filled life that is useful to God is not easy. This notion that Christianity is kind of like a little, you know, like an energy drink, you know, that you just feel better and go through life, you know, feeling better. No, it's not. It's more like constant chemo and radiation. Because if you want to be useful to God, he is constantly wanting to remove from us self-reliance, self-focus, self-absorption, self everything. He, the, the, self, the selfishness we were all born with, our flesh, God wants to mortify. And he wants to, he wants to roll it back in our lives. And he'll use almost any means. In fact, he does use any means possible. And that's what we see in their lives. And, and I'll just show it to you because to be useful to God means that God sees and honors and blesses and rewards any person that's useful to him with endless, eternal reward. We're rewarded in heaven forever for being useful to God. Now that's really interesting because that goes contrary, because most of us are more tied up with how to get the most out of this life, how to enjoy it the most, how to be the healthiest, how to, how to have the most freedom, how to have the most security and comfort. That's how we're wired. We just, security and comfort and convenience are kind of like the American dream. You know what God says? I can use you more if you're not secure. I can use you more if you're uncomfortable. I can use you more if you do not have convenience in your life. I want to get your attention. And I want you to be useful to me. And, and we see. It, it's kind of a difficult life. Anything in our lives that's not pleasing to God will vanish away. It will turn to smoke and ashes, Paul tells us. It will be forever forgotten. Anything that wasn't useful. So, you and I are given three score and ten years, 70, and if by reason of strength we get to 80, and whatever in that time period was useful to God lasts forever. Everything else, gone. Now, knowing that should alter where we point our lives, especially the younger we are. That's why Paul pointed out to Timothy, and that from a child you have known all this. And, and you and I should be responsible for cultivating, for wanting greater and greater usefulness to God. What's interesting is that out of all the thousands of Levites serving in the temple in the first century, Zacharias is one of the only ones we know by name. Have you thought about that? When you're reading the Bible, uh, there are all these different names in here. How come we know Zacharias' name? Because Zacharias was useful to God. God pointed that out, and he pointed out what made him useful.